The Pocket Go Retro Handheld is one amazing device for only $40 US, but there is one little problem that I think we can fix pretty easily, and that is that there's a little bit of light bleed uh, from the top and the sides of the LCD screen. With a little bit of clever positioning of some electrical tape, I think we can get the job done. Now before I try that, I did try a more extreme version first, and you can see along the edges I have um, a little bit of uh, foam double-sided tape, uh, like an automotive 3M tape, uh, stuck along the edges. And that works great, but one of the things that I noticed is that when I close the case, there's a little bit of a gap between the pieces. So I have a feeling that I have a little too much pressure in there, and there may be some long-term damage. So I'm going to try to pop this apart and see if I can do this with maybe just uh, some black electrical tape around the edges. So the L and the R buttons fall out pretty easily, as does the little uh, power switch slider. Uh, the trick is that along the bottom here, it's a little tight. Let's use my trusty guitar pick. Try to get in here. Try to find that edge. There it is. There it is. Okay. That's popped open now. And we just need to remove these two screws here and here to release the motherboard from the case. That one's easy enough. This other one, uh, depending on the model that you have, might be a little tight. Mine, because of the way this battery is shaped, it has this little foam or this little foil on the outside. I do need to kind of squeeze in the side there. But that's okay, you're not going to damage the battery. Okay, now with all those screws out, we can lift the motherboard right out of the case. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Because this little top panel is a pain to get back on there if it comes off. I'm just going to put a tiny piece of masking tape on here to hold this into place. There we go. Okay, so you can see what I did for this. So what I did for this more extreme version is I actually have this... Uh, double-sided foam tape, this automotive 3M tape stuck around the edges here, and I actually put uh, masking, or I put black electrical tape on the one side so that it wouldn't be sticky. Um, but it looks like, oh, and I, and I have a lot of other electrical tape down in here to block the light bleed that was coming off of this part of the LCD. But I think what I may be able to do is actually just mask completely around this edge, and then there will be no light to leak out in any direction. Okay, I'm going to try to do this with the screen on so that I can actually see the areas around the edge uh, where the actual picture is. I want to get as close as I can to the active pixels without covering any up. It is just cover the very edges and I can't uh, fold over around the side at all. So what I'm gonna try to do is I put some black electrical tape on this uh, piece of plastic that I won't stick to. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to trim off some nice thin strips here. So now what I have is this nice little thin piece here to work with. I'll drop it on the top here. So now we need the sides.
That's what we're looking for. Right next to the pixels, but not touching. We have three sides now. Now I have to deal with this larger one here. I'm trying to think I want to cover all the way to the edge of this white plastic frame. I think I'm leaking light here and here. That should cover it. Maybe I can sort of drag it into place. Almost that there, uh, almost. There it is on the bottom, and on the top. Okay, perfect. Now, as we can see, there is now a nice piece of tape along each edge including these little tabs covering the places the light was leaking out. Okay, before I try to seal it up, I want to go check one more time in the darkness. It looks really good, but surprisingly, there is still light kind of coming out and reflecting off of this ribbon cable. So I think I need to approach this a little differently. I think this needs to be addressed here, maybe with a little piece of tape. Well, maybe a piece of tape over that. That's okay, because there's no edges there. There's no uh, walls, so there should be room. Okay. Okay, I actually think that's gonna do it. I need to trim, I need to trim these edges. Right there. You can see it's fitting there. It's also fitting on that corner. It's lifted up, but it's gonna fall right into place. See, all it needs is just a little Little nudge, and now it's in there. So I think we've aligned everything. Boom. Snapped right in. That sure looks nice. With no light bleeding. Now, I need to kind of hurry and while things are still in place, at least get the motherboard. It's nice and tight right there. Before I crank this too tight, I'm going to need to get my little masking tape off of here. So it's going to be wedged in, if I'm not careful. The main thing the masking tape was doing is keeping this little reset button in place. That is a major hassle. It keeps falling out. Back to cranking this in. Nice and tight. Tester buttons. Buttons feel great. Let's see. Still works. Okay. So, plug the speaker back in. By the way, there's a ton of space in here. There could be a much, a much deeper, better sounding speaker in there. It's another, it's a mod for another day. Let's get our friends L and R buttons. Here's the R. These are also not that much fun. You know what? These are a great opportunity to use a little masking tape. Yeah, these little handhelds, all of the buttons fit just so. They have to be held exactly in place during assembly. Or they all fall out. You have this little power slide switch is one of the worst. Everything in place. And let's just try to drop this on. So the bottom has those little clips. I feel like I'm gonna get those in place first. <laughs> there we go, lost the power switch. That's okay. 
This one is so loose, it barely holds in there when it's snapped completely shut. So just get it there and hold it. The trick with that one is you just can't let go. If you, if you let any gap appear here, it will fall right out of the edge. Now is the time that I need to keep this part clamped together nice and tight, or that switch is going to pop right out of there. So that's your only hope of keeping that switch from falling back out. And I think that's it. We're entirely back together. This is much better. I don't have a gap along the top anymore like I used to. Or on the sides or the bottom. And we will see how it works. And with lights off, we can see the light bleed is gone. Mission accomplished.